So next we're gonna weld in a bridge for a notch. I got some round tubing that we're gonna use today. We're gonna sand down a few of the areas of that nice paint on the notch, weld in the bridge, and then we'll go from there. So I don't have a ton of experience welding. I've welded a few different things, but one of the things I feel comfortable about is, is these smaller things. And I'll kind of guide you through what to do. I have a flux core welder that I got from Harbor Freight. So, hey, no fancy welder here. No, not much experience, but enough to get the job done. We'll grind it. We'll make it look good. We'll paint it and it'll be awesome. Stay tuned. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what we're gonna be doing today, when I talk about a bridge, all I'm talking about is two bars that we're gonna connect to this notch. And what that's gonna do, when I take a bar and I connect it to the notch, that's gonna stiffen everything here. It's gonna give it some cross support to keep these from wobbling around or, or messing up. So yeah, this is gonna be a simple thing today but um, it's very crucial. You might be wondering like, I don't know if I can do that. I don't have any welding experience. Well, hey, welcome to the family. I don't have much either, but we're gonna do is grind down the two spots that these bars are gonna go in, and we're just gonna tack those in, keep tacking them, get a good weld. We'll grind it down and make it look really good. Again, this isn't holding the weight of the truck or anything. This is just to keep this notch together. So as long as we get a good weld, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look pretty, but we'll, we'll make some steps to try to make it as pretty as we can. So yeah, I don't have much experience welding. I've got a super cheap $100 welder from Harbor Freight, but it gets the job done. So yeah, follow along, check it out. So first of all, we're gonna take our little angle grinder here. I've got some 100 grit sandpaper on this and we're gonna grind out the areas where we're gonna weld the notch. So if you don't have one of these, this is, this is awesome. You can get a cheaper version from like Harbor Freight for 20 bucks, um, or you can just use any kind of sandpaper or a grinder or a wire wheel or whatever you have to grind down the paint so we can tack this thing into place. Next, we're gonna take our round tubing that I've had cut to size here, and we're gonna mount that in, and then use this clamp to clamp the notch together to hold it in place while we, while we weld everything in. So what I'm doing now is I have this uh, notch, it's perfectly level, so I want to get this bar the same level so I make sure I have it right. So. And that is real close. Yeah, I'm gonna roll with that. So we're gonna get this thing tacked in there um, and then we'll remove the clamp and then we'll weld it all the way. So we're getting ready to tack this bar in here. And uh, one of the things I want to do, I don't want to take all the wheels and all the stuff off. So I went and got just a cheap welding blanket here. And I'm going to lay this over the, the wheels and the tires and over the bags and all the stuff that the weld could destroy. So we don't want that to happen after all this hard work, right? So... Hey, again... I'm using a flex core welder from Harbor Freight. It was on sale for like a hundred bucks. 
This is not the welder to be welding in a notch with or any of the fabrication on the, the frame. This is strictly just a welder that you can do cosmetic things like this or small support things. So, hey, don't go out and buy one thinking you can chop your frame in half and weld it back together. You could probably weld it and make it look good and then it'll snap on you going down the road. So don't do that. Use it for small things like I'm doing today. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how bad my welds are and then how you can grind them down and make them look decent. Again, this is not my forte, but this is something that I'm challenging myself to grow on and I challenge you as well. Go buy a cheap welder, start welding stuff. You'll be surprised what you can actually do with a little bit of practice. You can build some confidence. The first time I did this freaked me out. I wasn't sure, but I welded it, I ground it down, I painted it, it looked nice, it held great. So hey, you got to start somewhere, right? And this is where it's at. So that's the first pass and yeah they are not good well to tell you that got hot but they're ugly so let's do the best that we can to grind these things down make them look a little bit better see if we missed any spots and then start tacking the areas that we didn't get that that great Like I said I'd do, I'm going to show you these terrible welds just to be completely transparent and hopefully this will encourage you that you can do better than I can. So, yep, nothing pretty to look at, but we're going to grind them down just a little bit. Not too much where it takes away the strength, but just enough to make them smooth. That way when whenever we paint them, they'll look just fine. So I'm just gonna start off with an angle grinder here and with a, an 80 grit paddle disc on. I like to use these for final finishes. I wish I had the one that had the rounded edges. I almost stopped and got one because this would work perfect going around here at an angle to get those rounded off. But I think this will work for what we're trying to do. And if it doesn't, we'll make it. Ear protection is important and if your wife tells you to wear it all the time and she watches your videos and I just didn't have them in I'm gonna get in trouble sorry about that got them in bunny Okay, I've got everything welded up. I did two welding passes on it and I've got it ground down. Like I said, it's not, it's not perfect, but I think it looks good. I'll take it. I'm gonna do one more little grind down with my angle grinder and I make sure it's smooth. I'll let it cool off a little bit, wipe it down and then spray paint it. I'm gonna use some acetone to wipe down these bars because when you buy this, it has a coating on it that is gonna keep it from rusting. So before I spray paint it, I wanna try to get some of that coating off. You don't need a ton of this, but I'm not gonna wipe it over the whole thing because obviously the other part is gonna be fine, but I wanna use the acetone just to give it one nice little wipe. 
that will also give you an opportunity as you wipe this stuff down go ahead and look for any places maybe that you that you missed while sanding you know welding it gives a lot of those little um, little specks that pop up everywhere you want to try to get rid of all those and make it smooth of course it's not going to be perfect but we want to get it to look as good as we can all right so i'm gonna get another rag here So before I put that truck bed coating on it that I put on the rest, I'm going to do some rust reformer here first. I think this really helps the, the paint stick better. And this is what I did on the rest of the frame. So I just want to continue to do what I did on all of it. Everything else seemed to, to stick really well. So, hey, if you got a good thing, just stick to it, right? We're not trying to put this on heavy. This is just trying to coat the whole thing because we're going to go back with that truck bed coating that we use on the rest of the frame. This is just to really get that stuff to stick well. And what's good, if you see any kind of bubbles or anything that's fish eyeing on this, you can let it dry and just sand it down. That truck bed coating stuff, you don't want to put that on without this because if something were to happen to that, then it's got a textured finish. So that's going to be harder to just kind of sand off. So we can test it with this, make sure everything's sticking really good. And if it is, we'll go back and put that truck bed coating on. So we've been able to grind down the notch, get these bars mounted up, weld those in, secure it, grind them, weld them one more time, grind it down, and now we're putting this, this rust restore on it. And we've been able to do all this in about an hour and a half. And that's also with me taking time to kind of explain the processes with big diesel trucks in the background making a lot of noise. But that's okay because we're getting the job done, right? So we're really close. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. Then I'm gonna spray it with the truck bed coating and then I'll do a walk around and we'll, we'll see what we got. Okay, the rust restore is dried on the bridge and the notches. So now we go with the Rust-Oleum truck bed coating. This is not a rubberized finish like an undercoating is. That's why I like it. That rubber stuff can get messy quick. It's hard to clean off. You can't sand it down. This is like a truck bed. It's got a sand type texture to it, but it doesn't clump up. It's a abrasive uh, coating, uh, abrasive resistant coating. Big difference there. But I just really like how it makes the truck look. It's kind of got a satin finish to it. And then before with like a Rust-Oleum satin, you can move your finger on it and it kind of leaves a mark like it just is. That, that was Rust-Oleum there. It kind of leaves a mark where this, you can rub it and it doesn't leave any of that kind of residue behind. Now, when I spray, I always try to keep it away from the screws and stuff. I love that just fresh look. I hate when paint is on screws and all that kind of stuff. It's the small details, I think, that makes my trucks kind of stand out from the rest. But it's just uh, small things like that. But whenever I spray paint, I try to just mist it on there a little bit. I don't go too heavy, especially with this. This has a tendency to try to run on you, kind of like all my ex-girlfriends. So I'm just trying to put a nice little coating because it was painted before. So I'm just trying... this tried to run on me a little bit so what I like about this stuff though is if it does run what I'll do is just kind of wipe the run a little bit now I wouldn't do this with regular paint you'll just make it worse you want to wait till that dries and then try to sand it down but this stuff since it does have that texture finish you can kind of wipe the run off and then just do a do a dry spray on it 
You don't want to put too much because then it'll just immediately start running again. But if you put a nice little dry spray, boom, the run is gone. The texture is filled up. It's not all the way gone. Let it dry for a few minutes and then put another coat on there and it'll begin to fill that in. Do a lot of spray painting stuff. So you learn a little bit of those tricks of the trade when you mess with it so much. All right, the paint is dry. We've got the bridge installed here. It's looking killer. Super happy with how it turned out. Even though the welds aren't perfect, I ground them down, made them look pretty good, painted them. They're secure. I tested them. I put some body weight on them and smacked them with a hammer a couple times. They're good. Overall, super happy with how those turned out.